Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk to you about food sensitivities and how to navigate food sensitivities while you're healing, while you're working on this process because this is a this is a process. This isn't something you're just going to click your fingers and be done. You may even experience significant improvements through certain parts of the healing process to then later fall into a place of what seemingly seems like you've been set back or that you're you're going backwards. The thing is that's not happening. You don't go backwards in the healing process, but it's non-linear and it's bumpy and it can be kind of confusing and it can be kind of scary, but today I want to talk to you about navigating the food sensitivities as they come and go and as they flow and how this how this process actually works because it can be really frustrating. I, I personally am going through something like this right now and I'll explain that. I have several clients that have talked to me recently about this as in we found their Goldilocks zone, you know, the zone where they feel great, that all their symptoms are in remission, everything's going perfect and then symptoms come back and it's like, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? This And sometimes you haven't actually done anything wrong and I want to explain this to you today. The first point is just because you're having a, a flare up, you're experiencing symptoms that you have had in the past that you have healed that have now come back you're not moving backwards necessarily it is possible that you can move back but you really have to be doing things you will know if the, this is you you know if you say for example you had mold exposure and you did a bunch of healing and then you went and decided to live in a building that has mold it again it's like yeah you, you can go backwards if you do that what i'm talking about is you're moving forward you know you're going in the right direction you know you're consistently implementing things that you know work for you and this looks different for everyone you know this might be coffee enemas this might be a probiotic supplement this might be digestive enzymes or adaptogens or like whatever it is but you're consistently doing what you know to work for you you, and then all of a sudden things seem to go wrong food sensitivities appear potentially food sensitivities that you've you've solved you've healed and then they, they then they come back if you're in a place where this isn't actually you just yet maybe you have food sensitivities and you've never found remission from them these have been persistent sensitivities this is still going to be very helpful for you the most important thing i can tell you is don't avoid anything that you aren't sensitive to what does that actually mean if you if you go on the internet and you you don't eat what people say is 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 bad, you'll end up not eating anything. Everyone says something's bad. If you ask the carnivores, they'll say all vegetables are poison. They're all just poisonous and they will kill you. You ask the vegans and they'll say meat, saturated fat, it's terrible for you. It's going to give you heart disease. You're going to die. If you listen to what every single person on the internet said, you would be left with nothing. You wouldn't even be able to drink water. You would have nothing. And they would even say you should probably stop breathing because there's pollution in the air. It's completely unrealistic. You need to find a grounded approach to this. You need to take what people say about foods, see if it fits for you try things and see how you feel and your your barometer for success is like your measurement for success is how do you feel if you eat something you feel worse for, for eating it stop eating it it's really simple it sounds really simple but you'll be you'll be surprised and, and it works inversely as well if you eat a food and you don't feel bad for eating it then eat it obviously there are some exceptions you know for example if you live in america i don't know what the fuck you've done with your food supply over there but it's a mess it's an absolute disaster i'm sorry if you live there but i don't know what you guys are doing over there like most of your food is not edible but say for the sake of things you're in the uk where things are slightly better at least you don't have gmos or europe or something like that where you have better cleaner food make smart choices you know i can eat bread and have i don't have any problems should i eat bread three times a day at every meal probably not it's about finding balance bread actually works really nicely for me it fills me up in a way that not a lot of other foods will the same goes for other types of starches like like say pasta or or rice or potatoes and a lot of people say you cannot heal on carbs like you have to do the keto you have to do low carb you have to do carnivore it's like what everyone said just do what works for you listen to how you feel there's one food group that i just cannot get on board with and i think this is quite a universal food group this is this is vegetable oils vegetable oils are not good like full stop they're just they're just simply not good and i think almost everyone agrees on this the vegans agree on this the carnivores agree on that vegetable oils are just bad so avoid vegetable oils as much as possible like your sunflower oil this is your canola oil your safflower oil personally from what i understand this also extends to other other oils that might even be considered potentially healthful like walnut oil some people say almond seed oil is good sesame oil personally if it comes from a nut or a seed or from any plant basically other than an olive or an avocado those oils are not stable outside of the whole food form and I would, I would avoid them. The processing that goes into getting those food, to getting those oils out of those foods, the bleaching, the chemicals, the, I would just avoid those foods. That's the only, the only food group I would completely and strictly avoid. Some people do amazing on dairy. Some people do amazing eating gluten. Like I eat gluten and I feel amazing. It doesn't, it doesn't not, it doesn't affect me positively or negatively either way. It's just completely neutral. But for me, when I have a, when I'm having a flare up or when, when my health kind of gets a little bit wobbly and this is what's going on right now i'm having a bit of a wobble and this this happens this is maybe like the third or the fourth time that this has happened through my healing process 
maybe never so severely, but like anytime you have a little wobble, it will shake the foundations and you will think I'm going back. I'm going back to where I was. I'm going to have all the same health problems that I did. Um, I, I fucked it up. Like I've done some irre irreparable damage and this was my fault. And what did I do wrong? So I can try and avoid doing that wrong. That is not a mindset that's going to help you throw that completely out the window. Healing is non-linear. Even if you're doing everything absolutely 100% perfectly, sometimes things will just go all shaky just because you're actually doing the right thing. What I think is going on in my case right now is I have built my immune response up significantly over the last few years. To give you a detail of what that looks like, before everyone around me would get ill and I would just get depressed and my liver would hurt and I would have lower energy. I would have no cold or flu, no mucus, no sneezing, coughing, nothing, no immune response. And now I'm having a bit of a chronic immune response going on all of the time. Like I was laying in bed last night and I was thinking my throat feels kind of sore and my, my lungs feel a little bit weird and I feel a bit mucusy. And I've accumulated lots of illnesses, like lots of viruses, lots of colds and flus and stuff over the years. And now my body is like, let's do this. Like, let's go on with this. And let's let's start taking some of these things out. Like 80% of your immune system is in your gut. You've got like your first barrier of like your actual, like your bacteria and your stomach acid and your bile. Like these, the body doesn't have systems. It doesn't have an immune system. It doesn't have a digestive system. It's all one thing. But if you think about your digestive organs in your digestive system, they all have functions in your immune system. Bile is for detoxification. Stomach acid kills a lot of pathogens. Your 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 gut lining is full of different um, antimicrobial substances. This is where your secretory IgA is. You know, your gut is basically all of your gut, almost all of your gut has immune functions in it. And then you actually have your actual immune system. You know, you've got your lymph nodes, your payers patches, your, your appendix, your microflora. These are all your immune system. So I, I think what's happening with me right now is I've reached a stage where my body is like, let's do this. Like, let's tackle these viruses, these things that we haven't been able to deal with for a long time. And thinking about this more from a, an Eastern perspective, like a traditional Chinese medicine perspective, my body's chi is being used for a certain job. My body is saying, I'm going to take this energy away from our digestive capacity. So I'm going to, we can't digest these foods for this time because we're now taking this energy and we're, re -re we're rerouting it into immunity. We're rerouting this into immune function. This is exactly what happens when you have an acute illness. Most people, if you have a really strong immune system, you'll get ill, you'll get a fever, you will get low appetite. Your body will reroute all of its energy into immune function. And because I, I still do have some level of immune dysfunction, my body is doing that as much as it can when I have an acute illness. But even in between, it's doing this kind of chronic thing. And it's taken some of my digestive capacity away. And what, what does this look like practically for me right now? This looks like I, I could eat literally almost anything. Maybe like I couldn't drink coffee because I would get heart palpitations. And there's maybe a layer of healing for that nervous system wise that's coming. And like, if I would eat a lot of raw nuts and seeds, or like if I had like three salads in a day, it would, my, my stomach would kind of not be very agreeable with this, but I could do like gluten and dairy and ice cream. I could do some nuts and seeds. No problem. I could have a salad. I could do all of the FODMAP vegetables, everything. And I, I would just feel amazing right now with my body diverting this chi and moving this energy from being focused on digestion into more let's clear this immune burden as my digestive capacity has got smaller it's excluded certain foods and these are the foods that have always historically been most problematic for me and it's really important i'm going to share what these are in my case but it's really important that you understand that it's not about the actual foods it's about the concept that i'm trying to teach you here if you know when you are doing really really bad you really struggle with digesting meat. In the future, when you get a cold or a flu or when your body is doing this kind of diversion of chi, you're going to find that you struggle with digesting meat. Like that's your predisposition. That's where your weak point is. That's where the, the chink in your armor is. If you find that your, your problem was, for example, you would get reactive to certain types of histamine foods. Let's say like just avocados or maybe egg whites. And then you, you didn't have problems with those anymore. And then they seem to come back. That's, that's your chink in your armor. That's where it's going to be. For me, the chink in my armor is, is fiber. Fiber is what my body struggles with the most. I think this is partly due to physiological factors, sort of being primary thing that influences your body's ability to handle fiber is your mucosal lining and your microbiome. And you can imagine if you're going through an extreme immune situation like I'm, your, your mucosa is, there's a lot going on there and your microbiome is kind of all over the place. Like, and that's kind of what you would expect. And for me, this has looked like I've lost some tolerance around certain FODMAP vegetables. So 
like particularly like garlic as an example but also raw things like say like like a salad i would not be able to digest a salad right now this can feel like you are losing progress this can feel like you're moving back or like you're missing something when actually this can just be a symptom that you're actually going in the right direction and your body has redirected that energy but the only way you'll know is if you understand these like chinks in your armor if you understand this process of how healing looks like and what this process is and this is this can be tricky to navigate you really need to be paying full attention to your to your process this is one reason i'm a huge advocate of being your own doctor being your own healer being your own practitioner even if you work with the best person in the world and i have I have several people that work with me and it's really, really cool. But the, when they are taking full responsibility of their situation and they're their own doctors, they're their own practitioners, they're their own healers, and I'm just there to provide support, the results they get are phenomenal because they're holding all the pieces. You know, they're not expecting someone else to do it. They have all of the pieces and then I can help them figure out where they all go. And that's when things really, really start to change. So I've lost some tolerance here. And all this means is just avoid these foods for a bit. It's not the end of the world. Just eat in accordance with what is what is working for you and support your body with the job that it's doing. So I know my body is trying to work on building this immune response and I'm doing everything I can to help it. A huge part of my healing has had a non-physical component. So there's all this like logical stuff that you can talk about. And we're going to get even more logical in a moment because I'm going to pull up my food sensitivities list and I'm going to go through that and help you navigate that in even more detail. And you can actually get a copy of that food list for yourself for free if you want towards the end of the video. I will get there, but first let me just detail this because it's really important and i see people really nailing this physical the physical and physiological components you know eating the nutritionally dense diet avoiding the foods that they're restricted to but then not doing emotional work and you really have to and what's really symbolic for me is the fact that my intolerances are based around fiber and if you think about fiber for what it actually is it is basically food material that is indigestible and i believe this to have a very strong connection with me on a on the metaphysical plane of having experienced trauma in my life in the words that i use myself i've experienced a lot of undigestible experiences you know things i haven't been able to process and that's exactly what fiber is fiber is an undigestible piece of food that's literally what it is there's a funny parallel there and you you have to look for these parallels in your in your process there are so many clues all over the place just keep your eye out for them but now i want to share with you our food sensitivities list. And I'm gonna walk you through a, a couple of these different food sensitivities categories. So for me, I used to have histamine tolerance. I actually, even with going through this little bit of a flare up right now where I'm having issues with the fibers, I still have no histamine problems. You know, I was eating chocolate, just had some cheese. I can do, I, could, I had some deli meat, you know, you don't have to be perfect to heal. So I've been doing these things and like histamine tolerance, not a problem, but fibers are a bit of an issue right now. So just navigate that. I know this looks different for everyone and I've got a food sensitivity chart and I'm going to go through it and we're going to look at certain different types of food sensitivities, like sensitivities to sulfur, sensitivities to salicylates, to certain FODMAPs and things like that. So I'm just going to share this. Uh, I'm just going to share this with you now. This is a food sensitivities list that I made a long time ago. I actually made this before I healed all, of, well, most of those food. I, I want to say I healed all of my food sensitivities. Some of them have come creeping back in, but considering I was eating five foods for five years, like the level of dietary diversity I have now is just completely on another level. I'm, I'm not complaining. I made this even before that, even before I achieved all of these um, reductions in my, in my symptoms. So this is a, this is, this document here is available for free. So I'm just going to give you a brief little run through of it, but you can see we go into different categories. So we've got amines, histamines, glutamates, salicylates, oxalates, sulfates, and thiols, uh, lectins, FODMAPs, uh, keto gaps and uh, the WD score, which is like the what what foods are let's say objectively better, but obviously there's no objectivity. But there you go, that, it it will do, and it gives you this really beautiful looking food chart. And I'm going to walk you through this, but just before I do that, these categories here they have a little kind of like a, a bit of like a guide. So for example, over here in the amine amine chart notes, it says like meats must be fresh, not aged, with no preservatives or additives. You know if you have an amine sensitivity, so that does include histamine. You know how much difference it makes if you have fresh meat versus aged meat. You know it's a big difference. So you can't just look at the chart. You need to come and refer to this little bit at the top because there's important details. You know histamine it must be fresh, not aged, with no preservatives. Fruit and vegetables must be fresh less ripe the better you know because when fruit ripens it increases the amount of histamine you know so it it really explains this there are also some guides around what symptoms you may experience so for example if you have salicylate intolerance 
there are some examples of symptoms that you may experience if you have this. If you are having food sensitivities or food reactions and you don't know why, read this whole document. Read through all of these things, see what fits, and try doing an elimination of this of these types of food groups. So let's let's say, for example, you read through this and you're reading and you think you so you maybe already think you have an oxalate intolerance. When you come and read this and you're like, oh yeah, this does kind of sound like me. I've had some kidney stones in the past. Um, I do get burning of the mouth, some digestive distress distress, maybe not comas, hopefully not, hopefully you're not having a coma right now. So then you would come down to the food chart and you would look at the oxalate column. And if the food here is low in oxalates, it basically, it means eat it. All vegetables will, and it, this will say this higher up in the chart, all foods will have some level of oxalates from the plant kingdom. That's just the nature of it. Animal products do not contain oxalates. Animal products also do not contain salicylates because they're not produced in, in animal products. These are plant defense mechanisms. Cows don't need plant defense mechanisms because they have legs and they can run away. But if you were to say, try and do an oxalate elimination diet, you would just eat more of the foods that are containing low amounts. And you can come down here and you'll see, for example, I'm gonna to go to the meat just so I can show you this. So meat is down here. You'll see meat is always low in oxalates because you just you just don't get it. And then you've got some, some odd foods here like hot dog. You know, is hot dog really a, really a good food? No, you can see over here, this is a four or a five. This is in this is in the health score. This is this is not really a good food for you to be be eating generally. You can see all of these low in oxalates. So if you think you have an oxalate problem, you just remove them. Let's say you think I'm um, having, I think I'm having histamine intolerance. Well, come up here, figure out where. So histamines is in 07. So you come down here, read this, read all of this about, about histamine. Read this and then come down to the chart, try and look at the histamine column and avoid all of the foods that are high in histamine. You really have to, the, the thing that's really tricky with food sensitivities is, if you have 100 foods in your diet that contain histamine, and you remove all of them apart from two, but the amount of histamine that's in those two foods still keeps you above the amount of histamine that you're able to tolerate, you will still feel just as bad as when you had all of those other 98 foods. You will not feel any different. This is why it's really tricky with food sensitivities. You you really have to go through this chart and see, okay, what, what am I eating? Am I having turnips? Oh, turnips are high in salicylates and I have a salicylate problem. Okay, they're medium in salicylates. If, if you're really sensitive or if you're trying to figure this out, I would even avoid things that are medium. I would be eating low or for, like over here, you've got free, like there's zero, zero, zero lectin. Animal products are really tricky. I, we actually made this a really long time ago. So I just want to have a look at something just out of interest because some animal products can have lectin. Okay, so we need, I'm going to go over this and, and correct this. So this is something that I learned. Lectins can actually be passed onto animal products if they're fed grain. So even though here lamb says lectin free, this would only be true of grass fed lamb. If the lamb is fed food that is high in lectins, like, like corn or, or grains or soy or something like that, the lectins can actually follow through into the meat, which is just, is just crazy. I want to just check up here as well in the lectin section. Did we, did we write that? Because I don't think I knew that when we made this. Let's just have a look here. Any group of proteins, especially plants that are not antibodies and do not originate in an immune system, but bind specifically to carbohydrate containing receptors on cell surfaces. This can also happen a lot in the gut. Lectins can make your gut very leaky. Most, if not all lectins can be broken down by cooking, particularly in a pressure cooker. So even if you've got animal products that might have lectins in, you know, I know that it can be expensive to try and afford organic and grass fed things all the time. I get it. I, I know how completely absurd food prices are currently, but that's a really good trick. You can use the pressure cooker on your on even on your animal products that might contain lectins, and it will break them down. Very very cool. So yeah, this is like a, a re, this is like a golden gem. This is like this food sensitivity list we made is incredible. I also will just come down to the references just to show you. We didn't just make this up, you know. We didn't just be like oh like this is cool. We'll just we'll just make all these things. We actually came down here and we found. We went online and we looked for all of the different food sensitivities lists that we could find that were the, the best ones, you know? Like this guy is does a lot of work with with salicylates. And down here, the Siggy. Siggy is like connected with, with, with histamine. Like they really know what they're talking about. And we cross-referenced. So if so down here, this is also a really nice one. This this is um this is the same company but a different a different list. So we 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 cross-referenced and in any case where one food said that histamine was medium and one food one said that histamine was low. We always played it with a with the ear of caution. We went 
if it said one said it was medium and the other one said it was low, we put medium. We really tried to make it so that this would protect you and this would this would be a, a safe list. So you would be more likely to succeed with it. So you can actually, when you when you get this, a lot of these are actually clickable links. For example, this one is clickable. This one is clickable. This one is clickable. And all of the other ones that aren't, they're very big. You could literally go on Google and search that and you would be able to find this. This is a fully referenced document. There is no column in here that is made up. The only, well, I suppose there's one that's made up, which is the WD score, the William Dickens score. This is the score that, <laughs> that I made up. So just to explain what this score is, generally, the more ones that you eat, the better. Twos, Generally, you want your diet to be basically ones and twos. So if you if you see, if you go up here, let's let me just give you a demonstration of this. So for example, if you come to the alcohol, alcohol section, you've got a lot of fours and fives. This means probably don't have alcohol all of the time. Like who would have guessed it? <laughs> welcome to welcome to healing. But if you come a little bit further, like here, coconut milk is a two. Coconut milk could be in your daily diet. Kombucha, a two. It's not that bad. It's pretty good. Up here, you've got some threes. Tomato juice, pineapple juice, orange juice. These are good. They are a little bit higher in sugar though. So you might want to be careful of that. Can really spike your blood sugars. But again, this is this is also what, something that's really important. So for example, I can spike my blood sugar and it doesn't really affect me that much. It does, like My body seems to handle it very well. I can drink orange juice. I could drink a liter of orange juice and I feel fantastic. I just feel full of energy. And then I feel great. If my wife were to do the same, my wife is experiencing PCOS and with an insulin resistance component, if she would do that, she would feel horrible. She would feel really, really bad. Even taking this score, you have to look at it contextually. You have to see how does it impact you? So like here, cranberry juice, we've got as a one. And you might think, well, I'm sensitive to cranberries. You know, I have intolerance to, I have intolerance to salicylates and, and I have intolerance to amines and I'm doing the keto diet. Should I have cranberry juice because it's a one? No, you shouldn't because you've got a void here. This is high in salicylates and it's high in amines. So don't do it. The reason that we made this document so comprehensive and with this score at the end is the WD score gives you a rough guide. Eat lower numbers. If you can eat more ones and twos, that's better. Threes and fours, generally okay, have occasionally. Maybe don't eat them every single day. Fives, you really probably shouldn't be. Like here, vegetable oil, I was saying earlier. Vegetable oil is a straight five. That's a, not a good food. Then you've got tallow is a one. Have it all the time. Sesame oil, definitely not as bad as vegetable oil, but do you want to have it every day? Probably not. Olive oil, MCT oil, mayonnaise. And again, this mayonnaise, this is not store-bought mayonnaise. This is not mayonnaise made with vegetable oil. This is mayonnaise you make at home with, with egg yolks and with, with olive oil. Canola oil, five. Avoid, just avoid it. Almond bar, generally not great. Maybe have occasionally, don't have it every single day. And also, if you make almond bar at home, it's going to be very different than if you buy it from the store. That's going to change that score. That's going to bring it down to a three. Dairy is a one all the way across. The thing is, you might say, but I'm, I'm lactose intolerant or I have a severe dairy intolerance. Then don't eat it. Okay, then don't eat it. It doesn't matter what the chart says. You're in control of your health process. But you might hear people online saying, dairy is the devil. It is going to just completely kill you and it makes you get mucus and it's going to clog your detox pathways. If you eat dairy and you feel good, keep eating dairy. Keep doing what works for you. You're the only one that can navigate this. And this is a nonlinear process. Just because you had tolerance to something once doesn't mean you'll always have tolerance to it. It might, you when you have a flare up, when you get cold or flu, when you get sick, it's possible that you will lose tolerance. That does happen. That happens to normal people. That's not because you have a health problem, but your health problem will probably dictate whereabouts that's going to be. So you just have to be careful that you navigate that you learn yourself you understand yourself you understand how your body works and when it goes wrong where it's going to go wrong and navigate that it's really scary when you lose some tolerance you feel like you're losing ground and you feel like you're going back you are not you are not going back this is a dynamic fluid process it's non-linear non-linear is a nice word i actually prefer dynamic because dynamic implies that it's moving all of the time and non-linear makes you in a way not the fact of linearity kind of makes you feel like you're always going in this direction. You are always going forward, but this dynamicness makes you feel like it's a bit more like responsive. You know, it's a bit more fluidity. It's 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 flowing and changing a little bit more. And sometimes things will look bad, but that's actually really good. And sometimes things will look good and that's actually not so good. You know, it, how things look and you can't measure up how things look to how things are actually going all of the time. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. But you have to trust the process. You have to... You have to trust yourself. Here's a, here's a non-physical component for you. 
a lot of healing of, of, of especially digestive problems and food sensitivities is the energy of the solar plexus. The solar plexus is responsible for your ability to make decisions and to trust yourself. Can you see how this is so connected? You need to learn what is good for you and what is not and how to trust your instincts and how to trust what's going on. Take everything that I've said today and take everything else that you hear on the internet and run it through your solar plexus chakra and discern if this is right for you or not. You're the only one in control of this process. And sometimes I know it doesn't feel like it, but that is actually the truth. You are the one that's in control of this process. So take control of it and do what you can to change the situation in your for your for your best outcome. If there's anything I can do for you, please ask. If you need to leave a comment or you need to shoot me an email, my email is in this document. Please, please, please ask for help because I struggled with this for a really long time and I could have moved forward a lot faster if I had help and I didn't ask for help because I didn't know who I could ask help to. If that's me, please ask me for help. If it's somebody else, please go and ask them for help. Don't do this by yourself. I'll leave you with one more thing just before we finish today. If you want a copy of this chart, I will, I'm going to leave a link in the description afterwards so you can go down. This is a big document. This is like, this is 87 pages. I cannot just give you a link to it. I have to, you have to give me your email so I can send it to you because it's a very big document. So put your There'll be a link down below somewhere. You can click it and it will take you to a webpage and you put your email address in there and you press go and it will send you a copy of the document for free. You don't have to pay anything. It's This is completely for free. If for some reason the link isn't there or you can't find it or you just want to do this right now, you can come over to my website. This is my website here. The URL is my name, williamdickinson.co.uk. Very easy to find. So williamdickinson.co.uk. So you come over to williamdickinson.co.uk and then at the top, there's a learn section. You go to learn, free guides, WD comprehensive food sensitivities list. You just click that link and it will take you over here and you just put your email in and you press go and it will send you the email straight to your inbox. It will also sign you up to a, a 10 day exclusive email course. This is a course that is, is designed to help you implement the information in this document better. I call it padding. It's like Sometimes just giving you all of the information that you need doesn't work because you're like, this is so much. I cannot process all of this at the same time. I cannot, I don't know what to do with it. You know, it's like funny, funny analogy. I'm actually going to call you a monkey. It's like, if you imagine a monkey, you give him a hammer. He doesn't exactly know what to do with it at first. If you give him a hammer and a set of nails, he's like probably just banging random things with a hammer. And he doesn't know how to use it properly. It's like, if I give you a, like this really cool tool set, you might be like a monkey with a hammer. And you're like, I don't know what to do with this. So you just start banging things. And it can overwhelm you and just like, I don't know what to do with this. So I'm just going to put it down and I'm just going to leave it alone. The email course is designed to help keep you on track, to hold your hand a little bit through this process, because I know it is a lot of information. And I know it can feel a little bit like you're kind of on your own through this process. I know how tricky it is. It's designed to keep nudging you back towards the document and just keep you on track and tell you a little bit about me and how I reversed my food sensitivities as well. If you want a copy, go and grab one. It's free. I don't know how long it will be free for. So if you think, oh, maybe I'll grab it tomorrow, we are probably going to sell this eventually. So go and grab one for free now and then you can download it. Like after you get it emailed, you can download it, you can keep it on your computer, you can have it forever. It also prints very well. I have a lot of my clients print this out and they go to the supermarket with a physical copy with them. So this, this is designed to print as well. Joanna, my wife, very good with technical stuff. She put it in a format where it's very good to be printed. So it's very printer friendly as well. Get yourself a copy. If you need anything from me, like if you have food sensitivities and you don't know how to navigate it, if you're struggling with something, if, if you just need a, if you just need a little bit of help, reach out, ask me for help, ask me some questions, leave me a comment below. If you already have this list and you've been using it for a while, let me know. Like, let me know that the things that we're doing, that we put a lot of energy and resources and money into making are actually helpful for you. Because, you know, I can't, I couldn't make a document like that by myself. I'm not technically minded. We have to pay people to put this together and compile all the, you know? So it's like a lot of stuff goes into building something like this. So if it's helping and you're using it, like, please let me know. I would really, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you need anything, Either come over to my website and send me a thing through the form, shoot me an email, support at williamdickinson.co.uk, or send me a, a message on Facebook or Instagram. I'm very friendly. I don't bite. Just reach out, send me a message. So that's everything for me today. So take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.